In 1861, Abraham Lincoln was actually not very well known on the national stage. South Carolina had already seceded in December of 1860, and yet more states would secede before his inauguration on March 4th. Lincoln's inaugural address had to do a number of different things. He needed to speak to the divided North and convince them that he was actually the right man for the job. Lincoln and the outgoing President James Buchanan went up to the Capitol and Lincoln gave his first inaugural address and fortunately passed off quite well. This is the final version of it, so this may have even been what he had when he was reading it. We must not be enemies. Though passion may have strained, it must not break our bonds of affection. The mystic cords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to every living heart and hearthstone all over this broad land will yet swell the chorus of the Union when again touched, as surely they will be by the better angels of our nature. These two items are really treasures of the, the Library of Congress. Uh, here you have the actual inaugural Bible on which Lincoln was sworn in. So in the back of the Lincoln Bible is an attestation from William Carroll, who was the clerk of the Supreme Court, attesting that this is indeed the Bible he purchased and the one that was used by Abraham Lincoln during his inauguration in 1861. And there's also the seal of the Supreme Court of the United States in blue there. And then here we have Mary Todd Lincoln's inaugural jewelry. This is a pearl necklace and bracelets purchased at Tiffany's in New York by the president himself. This jewelry was worn by Mary Todd Lincoln at the first inaugural ball. When Mary Todd Lincoln came to the White House in 1861, she wanted to bring back some of the grandeur and style. Uh, so she dressed in very elaborate dresses. She had many made for her. She wanted to wear jewelry that was what she thought was representative of the first lady. 